The following program is made possible by a grant from Pan American Life Insurance Company. It's Varsity Quiz Bowl. And today, Mark Lee, Mark Tellis, Tom Naraki, and Kevin Talley from the St. Paul School will meet in a battle of quick recall. Leslie Caste, Terry Thibodeau, Lorena Donnell, and Amory Radcliffe from Ursuline Academy. The alternate from St. Paul's is John Martini, and the coach, Brother Raymond Bullier. And the alternate from Ursuline is Giselle Tompkins, and the coach, Lita Chestnut. And now, here's our moderator, Mel Levin. Thank you, everybody. Thank you very much, and hello once again for Varsity Quiz Bowl. This is the final game of our, what, round of 16. So the winner today enters that very select round of quarterfinal play, and we have only eight teams remaining vying for the championship. Before we start, let me introduce our judge, Dr. Ann Akers, and to her right, our scorer, Terry Utterback, who works for the broadcast division here at Channel 12, also Mike Cooney, the production staff. He's your recognizer. Let's recognize them. All righty, ready to go. Here's a face-off. We're leading up to an audio lanyap of 20 points. In July of 1945, Clement Attlee, Joseph Stalin, and Harry Truman met at a conference... St. Paul's tally. The Alta? No, I'm afraid that's incorrect. We'll repeat now in its entirety for Ursuline. Remember, you must bring in. In July of 1945, Clement Attlee, Joseph Stalin, and Harry Truman met at a conference of Allied leaders for 10 points. Where was the conference held? Where? Anyone? Ursuline, Thibodeau. Paris? No, it was held at Potsdam. Potsdam. We have another face-off. For 10 points, what's the name of the group of 14 books of the translation into Greek of the Old Testament considered to be of doubtful authenticity that are rejected? Ursuline, Donalds. Deuterocanonical books? No, I'm afraid not. We'll repeat now in its entirety for St. Paul. I'm afraid we had a, an appearance, at least, of consultation. Remember, you cannot turn to each other or move your lips or anything. This is still a, a face-off, or should be. We're going to throw it out. Actually, I was describing the Apocrypha. We have another face-off. For 10 points, what is the scientific name given to a sudden change in a species from the normal type when such change First line, tip it off. Mutation? Mutation's correct, for 10 points. <laughs> All right, Ursline, you're on the, uh, on the board. You're entitled now to an audio lanyap of 20 points, ladies. Mm -hmm. Before I ask the four questions, I want you to listen closely to this song. Let's All right. That's as much music as you will now hear. Here come the questions. Number one, name the song. Heart of Glass. That's right. It was the first big hit in the USA for this group. Name the group. Blondie. Correct again. From what platinum album is this song taken? Mm. Remember the album name. Uh, Parallel Lines. Parallel Lines. That's right. Also, and finally, for a total of 20 points, name the blonde female vocalist who heads the Deborah group. Deborah Harry. Correct. You've got 20 points. And here's another face off. We're going for a land yap of 20 teams. The westward flow of European settlers and the justification for the civilizing of the American West was summed up in a two-word phrase put... St. Paul's tally. Manifest destiny. That's the phrase for 10 points, St. Paul. <laughs> that phrase first put into circulation by a man named John O'Sullivan, a journalist in 1845. You have a chance at 20 more points, which could tie the score. Here's your land yet. Spring seems to be the season for sporting events. In case you hadn't noticed, the 500 and the Derby are, are coming up. And back-to-back -back last Sunday and Monday, there was golf and running, two important events. So for 10 points apiece now, name the winner of the Golf Tournament of Champions held in California and the runner who won the Boston Marathon Monday. The runner was Seiko. The uh, runner was Seiko. Correct. Watson. Uh, Watson. No, it was Lee Trevino. Lee Trevino, but you picked up 10 more points. St. Paul's. Here's another face-off. We're going for a landing up of 30 points. It's not unlikely that universities will soon be graduating larger numbers of selenologists, or selenologists, as you will, S-E-L-E. -E. For 10 points, what is the specialty? First line, they, they study the moon. That's right, it is. The study of the moon. <laughs> All right.
right, ladies, you've got a 30-point lanyap. If you can guess the identity of this mystery person after one clue, you earn 30 points. If it takes two clues, it'll be 20 points. If it takes all three, 10 points. First clue, he's the lucky son of an itinerant salesman named John Edward, who tried to make a living for his wife, Nell, and their two sons by selling shoes in a variety of Illinois locations. From that, can you determine who the mystery uh, person is? For 30, we'll ask for an answer. <laughs> Tom McCann. Tom McCann. <laughs> <laughs> we'll, we'll try another clip for 20 points. His older brother's nickname was Moon. His nickname was Dutch. Anyone want to take a shot? We'll have to move along. All right, clue number three for 10 points after his stint as a sportscaster. He became a Hollywood actor, starred in a number of westerns. He was married twice, the second time to the daughter of Dr. Loyal Davis of Chicago. Who is he for 10 points? It's President Ronald Reagan. <laughs> All right. Got every bit of it's factual. Another face off. We're going for a land you have 30 points. For a quick 10, who was the Irish born liberator of Chile? Irish born. O'Higgins? Correct. Bernardo O'Higgins. Okay, St. Paul picks up 10, you trail by 10. Here's a 30-point lanyap and an assortment of music questions at 10 points apiece. First, what instrument does the concert master of an orchestra play? What is his instrument? An oboe? No, he plays the violin. The first violinist is always the concert master. Were the words of America, were the words of America written by Samuel Smith or Francis Scott Key? Smith? That's right. He didn't go for that one. Key wrote, Key wrote the Star Spangled Banner. I'll get it straight sooner or later. Does the loudness or softness of a tone depend upon pitch, frequency, or amplitude? amplitude. Pitch, frequency, amplitude. Amplitude. You're right. You got two of the three. 20 points, St. Paul. <laughs> and you've gone ahead by a score of 45 to 35. Here's another face-off. We're, we're moving toward a lanyap of 20 points. For a quick 10, complete the following quotation. The glory that was Greece, the grand line, Donalds. The grandeur that was Rome. You completed it all right. That's right. I was going to move a little further and then ask for only one word, but you got it all. Here's a land yap at 20. Score tied 45 all for 10 points apiece. Tell me approximately how much will Dan Rather earn as Walter Cronkite's successor at CBS? Approximately a quarter of a million dollars a year, half a million dollars a year, a million dollars a year, two million dollars a year. And what colleague did Rather beat out for the job? Um, All right, want to take a shot at the salary first? Say two million. We'll ask for an answer, girls. We'll have to move it along. Two million? No, it's only one million. Only. <laughs> and who did he beat out? Do you remember? Highly publicized. Brinkley? Con. No, it was Roger Mudd, who then moved on to another network. He picked up, I'm afraid, no, you missed no. him. <laughs> we'll move along. Another face-off. Beg pardon, won't be a face-off. That buzzer denotes the beginning now of rapid fire. And rapid fire, ask the questions as quickly as they're answered. Correct answer, 10 points. Incorrect answer is a minus five. Only one answer per question, no referrals. And we continue in a countdown of two minutes until it uh, sounds again. So. The theme for this week's rapid fire will be music, classical, popular, music from movies, music from, uh, music from on and off Broadway. So music is the theme. Let's begin. Number one, this fine pianist exhibits his talent on the LP Streetlight Serenade. Street Life Serenade. Who is he? Anyone? Billy Joel. Name the composer of the music for the ballet, Swan Lake. First line, tip it up. Tchaikovsky. That's correct. Tender Shepherd is from what musical that starred Mary... First line, tip it up. Peter Pan. Correct. You know this orchestra for On the Third Day and Discovery. What is it? St. Paul's Monarchy. Electric Light Orchestra. That's right. Name the composer of the Pier Gint Suite. Who was he? First line, tip it up. Grieg. Grieg, I, I think we'll give it to you. G-R-I-E-G. -E Grieg is usually the pronunciation, but you know it. In what hit Broadway play did Tomorrow appear? St. Paul's Talents. Annie. Correct. Who wrote and performed The Electric Horseman? St. Paul's Talents. Willie Nelson. It was. Name the composer of Peter and the Wolf. 
Ursuline Ratcliffe. Prokofiev. That's right. In what 20th Century Fox film was Raindrops Keep Falling on My Head featured? St. Paul's New York. Butch Cassidy and the Sundance Kid. That's kid. right. It sounds like a person, but it's really a group, and you should recognize them from worlds away. Worlds away. The group, Pablo Cruz. This composer wrote Appalachian Spring. Ursuline Castine. Copeland. Correct. Name the great comedian, writer, director, star of silence and movies who composed the music of Eternally, the theme song for the film Limelight. St. Paul's New York. Chaplin. That's right. Weekend in L.A. is one of his LPs. St. Paul's New York. Keith Carradine. No, it's George Benson, who was a very famous composer of the Moonlight Sonata. Ursuline Castan. Beethoven. That's right. Who composed Victory at Sea? Great documentary on NBC. Richard Rogers was his name. His LP, Songbird, came out some time ago. What was his name? Jesse Colin Young. The title heroine of this opera sings the stirring habanera, which describes Ursula life as a... Then. Carmen. That's right. The title of the song in the movie about a lioness named Elsa is what? St. Paul's New York. Born free. Correct. The vocalist who released Running on Empty. St. Paul's New York. Jackson Brown. That's right. Sweeney Todd is about the barber of Fleet Street. St. Paul's New York. Uh, we're going to ask what barber did Rossini write a comic opera about as a barber of Seville. That buzzer ends the first half, and the game's about as close as close can be. Ursuline Academy 115, St. Paul's School 105. Need I say, the issue is still in doubt? Stay tuned. We'll be back in just a moment to talk to our contestants. On Easter Island, the centuries live side by side. Beyond the hula girls and flower lays, the welcoming songs and smiles, lie the relics of ancient, half-glimpsed mysteries. Here, a visitor from the present, I set foot on the endless continent of the past. See it Sunday evening at 8 on Channel 12. We have an extremely close game, and we'll get to it in just a moment. But right now, we want you to meet our panelists and once again hear about what they do in their spare time, their pastimes and extracurricular activities. How about you, Mark Lee? Okay, I'm uh, very interested in music, listening as well as playing. I play piano, and I play a keyboard for the jazz band at St. Paul's. Um, interested in science. Uh, hopefully, I'll be taking my project up to International Science Fair in Milwaukee, Wisconsin in May. Great. I'm also a member of the Key Club. Uh -huh. so. That'll keep you busy, Mark, for a little while, I reckon. How about the captain here, Mark Tallis? Uh, I play the drums in the marching band at St. Paul's, and I'm also an active Key Club member, and I enjoy listening to music, playing tennis, and washing my car. <laughs> <laughs> Not necessarily in that order? No. Nah. Tom, how about you? I'm also interested in music. I play tenor saxophone in the jazz band. I enjoy listening to music, especially the Beatles. I'm also into baseball and trivia of all, all kinds. All right. And the uh, varsity quiz bowl, you don't do bad on that either, any one of you. Kevin, how about I like you? reading and writing science fiction, the ever-popular music of John, Paul, George, and Ringo, computer sciences, and I like fantasy war games. Excellent. Well, look, it's really been great meeting you fellas. You've done an excellent job here. You've got a school to be proud of, St. Paul's. Nice to have you on. What can I say about these gals, except they're delightful? And bright. And I imagine you have a lot of activities you're going to tell me about. Right? Yeah. So? Well, I'm a member of the Drama Club and the National Honor Society. I enjoy theater very much. I've performed in productions with community theaters, Ursuline Theater, Jesuit Theater, and Tulane Summer Lyric Theater. Wow. I'm a piano student and I've participated in many contests and competitions. And I also do volunteer work at WYS. <laughs> <laughs> She's worried about her talent, huh? <laughs> Very talented lady. Terry, how about you? I'm president of Queen's Players, Ursuline's Drama Club. I enjoy acting and participating in speech tournaments. I was co-captain with Lorena here of the Equation Team and participated in math meets. I'm a member of the National Honor Society, the Student Council, the St. Benil CYO, and I'm a dancer with the Crescent Ballet Company. And I try to spend some spare time with my family. <laughs> <laughs> Once a month, you call them and say, hello, no. Lorena. No, I know it's not right. A week. I'm oh. like everyone else on this team. I'm interested in drama, and I'm in a play tonight at the Contemporary Arts Center, and uh, I spend a lot of time going to speech tournaments, and also I'm with Terry with the math and the equations team, and I'm, I enjoy French very much, and I recently won the state rally in French. Overall winner. That's terrific. <laughs> Overall state championship. That's beautiful. Armor, what about you, actress? Well, I'm in the drama, drama club, too. This is getting sort of monotonous. Um, <laughs> <laughs> speech tournaments. Um, Ursuline. And there's our director sitting in the audience there. She's the director of all of our plays. 
we're all in, and um, I enjoy music, and I um, I enter vocal contests in the city here, and I'm in the National Honor Society. I like to travel with my family, and this summer I'm planning a trip to Honduras with a volunteer service organization, and um, I'm so French. I went to the rally with her, but she beat me, so. <laughs> <laughs> you all are beautiful. That's great. That's why. Well, you can see, folks, if you want to cast a play, just call Ursuline. They'll take care of the whole thing for you. I think we're now ready to go in the second half of this extremely close game between Ursuline and St. Paul. Ursuline has a 10-point lead, 115 to 105. And here's the first face-off of the second half, contestants. Now, this is pointing for a 30-point land. You have the face-off is going to be a visual, by the way, so we'd like you to direct your attention to the monitors in front of you, and you will see a picture of a painting called portrait of Francis of Moncata. It was painted by one of the most famous portrait painters of the 1600s. He was born in Antwerp, Belgium, studied with Rubens, and in 1632 between, became court painter to King Charles I of England. For 10 points, name him. Anyone? Marceline Donalds. Rembrandt. No, no. St. Paul's. I'm going to take a while. Van Eyck. Van Eyck. No, I'm afraid it's Van Dyke, I'm sorry. Anton Van Dyke. More famous, perhaps, for his uh, bearded men with Van Dyke beards. Here's another face-off. We're going for a lanyap of 30 points. For 10 points, what economic principle states that after a business reaches a certain optimum size, any further increase in size results in a reduction of the rate of returns? You hear this term frequently, and it is actually a law of business. It's called the law of diminishing returns. All right, we have uh, another face-off. The ohm, O-H-M, is the unit of electrical resistance. The mo, M-H-O, is a unit of electrical conductance. For 10 points, what is the commonly used unit of electric current? Paul. St. Paul's tally. Ampere. That's right. Ampere it is. For 10 points, and you tie. It puts the two teams even, 115 all. Here's a lanyap of 30 points for St. Paul's. In September 1815, the Holy Alliance was signed by the rulers of Austria, Prussia, and Russia. Now, for 10 points each, correctly name these three rulers and their respective countries. Remember, it's Austria, Russia, Prussia. The year 1815, the famous Holy Alliance. Peter the Great. Uh, Peter the Great. Russia. For Russia. Continue. You have to fill it in pretty fast. Wilhelm for Austria. Wilhelm for Austria. Uh, well, I'm going to have to intercede here. We, we can't let it run too long. Alexander I was the Tsar of Russia at that time, and he represented that country. Francis I of Austria and Frederick William III of Prussia. Uh, Frederick of Prussia were the other two rulers. We'll move on to another face-off. We're leading up now to Alanyap of 30. He is the brilliant American film director who produced the classic 2001 A Space Odyssey. Bruce Lyne Donalds. Kubrick. That's right. Stanley Kubrick. Bounce back in front, there's a line 125 to 115. The land yap is for 30. I'm going to give you three groups of words. In each group, there's one word that does not belong. Does not. For 10 points each, name that word that doesn't belong in each group. Group one, artless, unsophisticated, naive, and cheek. Or cheek. Cheek, cheek, cheek. Cheek. That's right. It does not belong. Group two, apparent, seeming, quiet, ostensible. Which doesn't belong? Quiet. That's exactly right for 10 more. And finally, group three is exhibit, find, display, show. Find. Find, find is right. You had all three. 30 points. <laughs> we have another face-off. We're going out for a landing up of 30 again. He was the namesake of a former United States president who refused to leave his lodge on Mount St. Helens and was killed for 10 points. St. Paul's Lee. Harry Truman? That's right, it was. Harry Truman. In this case, Harry R. Same name as the former president. Here's a land yap of 30 coming up. You're trailing by, by 30. So you could tie if you get all parts of this. There are seven deadly sins, as we know. You can earn five points for each one of these sins that you can name up to a total of six or 30 points. So we're asking for six of the seven deadly sins. I'd like to refer to Mr. Naraki. That's proper within the rules. All right. Pride. Lust. Gluttony. Sloth. Sloth, greed. Is that one more? One more. That's fine. One more. Uh, you need one more. You'll have to come up with it quickly. 
The other would be either covetousness or envy. And you have made five, however. That's 25 big points, and you trail now by only five points. St. Paul's 150, Ursuline 155. Another face-off. We're going for a line up at 20. Queen Mother Elizabeth is the mother of the present Queen Elizabeth II of England. For 10 points, who was the mother of Queen Elizabeth I of England? Who was her mother? Looking back in That's history. Broadcasting. Victoria? No, St. Paul's. Anybody Saint want Paul's to take a rocky. shot? Mary? No, Anne Boleyn. Anne Boleyn. Another face-off. The controversial television docudrama offended, this one offended Saudi Arabia, but did not Saint have... St. Paul's tally. The death of a princess. That's the one. Death of a princess, correct. You picked up 10 points. You've gone ahead 160 to 155. Here's a land you have at 20 for five apiece. Correctly answer the following questions about William Shakespeare. Number one, he was born in 1564 and died in 1616. Within 10 days, tell me the day and the month on which he died, which is also the generally accepted month and day of his birth. April 23rd. That's exactly it. Today. Secondly, what was the maiden name of Shakespeare's wife? Hathaway. That's right, Anne Hathaway. In what town was Shakespeare born? Stratford-on-Avon. That's correct. And finally, for a total of 20, name one of Shakespeare's three children. Anyone? Judith. Judith? That's right. The others were Susanna and Ham Nett. You've got 20 more points. St. Paul. <laughs> You've gone ahead 180 to 155. Here's a face-off. We're going for a land up of 20. It's almost derby time. So for a quick 10, name the first filly to win the derby in six... Ursula Rutcliffe. Regret? No, I'm afraid that's incorrect. And we'll repeat now for St. Paul's. St. Paul's Newark. Genuine risk. Genuine risk. The full question. Didn't have a chance to state it. The first filly to win the Kentucky Derby in 65 years since regret. All right, it's genuine risk. We have 10 points. Here's a land yap at 20. For 10 points each, identify the following U.S. Supreme Court decisions given the following clues. One, the monumental 1954 decision which lighted the way to desegregation in public parks, hospitals, voting places, schools, among others. I'd like to delegate to Mr. Naraki again. Mr. Naraki. Brown versus the Board of Education of Topeka, That's, Kansas. That is correct. Second, the 1962 decision which changed the course of American history by establishing the right of indigence to be provided free legal representation, court appointed in serious criminal cases. Landmark case of 1962 was called Gideon versus Wainwright. You picked up 10 more points, St. Paul. We have another face off. We're going to a land up to 30, James. For a quick 10, who first formulated the theory that the velocity of falling bodies is independent? St. Paul's Naraki. Galileo. That's correct. Independent of their weight. <laughs> Galileo, Galilei. Here comes a land yap of 30 points. Three questions on zoology. There are about three different herbivores that you should be able to recognize from these descriptions. First, there are three species of this herbivore, and what they all have in common is that they live in Africa and have markings that are as individual as human fingerprints. For 10 points, by what name do we know this horse-like animal? A zebra. Correct. 10 more. This animal's thick coat and long hairs, which reach almost to the ground, enable it to live on the high Tibetan plateau, one of the bleakest regions of Asia. Some of its closest living wild relatives are the aurochs and bisons. For 10 points, what is that animal called? A llama? No, this is called a yak. Number three, Bos indicus is the Latin term for these native cattle of Asia and Africa. They're easily recognized by the prominent hump over the shoulders and the large baggy dewlap under the throat. They're sometimes interbred with more common cattle for increased resistance to heat. What's the common name of these cattle? A bison? No, they're Brahma or Brahma bulls, or zebu sometimes they're called. You picked up 10 more points. Here's another face off. We're going for a landing up at 20 for quick 10. Name the star of the first talking motion picture. St. Paul's Milwaukee. Al Jolson. Al Jolson's correct. <laughs> Your land yap is for 20, a scale in music is a series of tones arranged according to rising or falling pitch. There are four major types of musical scale used in Western music. For five points apiece, name them. I'd like to refer to Mr. Lee. Um, chromatic scale? Uh, Continue. I, we'll have to move along. Chromatic melodic, is, melodic minor, major. No, I'm afraid not. It's chromatic, uh, diatonic, whole tone, pentatonic. You picked up five more points, St. Paul. All right, we have another face-off. We're going for a land yap of 20 points. For a quick 10 points, name the Russian revolutionary statesman, founder of Bolshevism and the USSR. Who was he? St. Paul's Naraki. Lenin. That's correct. Vladimir Lenin. Picked up 10. 
This lanyard is 20 points in all for five apiece. Identify these famous slayers of literature. First, he slew Grendel. Beowulf. Right. The slayer of Abel in the Bible. Cain. Correct. In the Iliad, he slew Hector. Who? Homer. No, it was Achilles. And finally, in mythology, the slayer of Medusa. Slayer of Medusa was Perseus. You picked up 10 points, however. And there is the final bell. We're going to tally our, our final score, validate it, and then we'll be back in just a moment to declare the winner. The team that advances automatically to the quarterfinals, the round of eight in our varsity quiz bowl tournament. Hitler unleashed his forces against any group who might oppose him. The Roman Catholic Church was one of his favorite enemies, but it was for the Jews, whom he had hated since his youth, that Hitler had a special vendetta. From a mixture of religious and ethnic backgrounds, we came to confront the reality of the Holocaust through Bertha Lautner, a survivor of two and a half years in Nazi death camps. See it Monday night at 7 on Channel 12. And here we are, the final score you see posted. St. Paul's 255 made quite a rush down to the wire. And Ursuline Academy 150, an excellent team. St. Paul's, you're going to advance, of course, to the round of eight, and that is quite a privilege. Congratulations to you. <laughs> Very important victory. Well, I don't know what to say, but I, uh, I know this. Leslie and Terry, it's been delightful having you with us. You all have represented your school so well. And that, of course, goes for Lorena and Armour, who will be back next year. You two will graduate, but we'll always remember you. And we'll think finally of Ursuline. When they return next year, Ursuline Academy. In our new high school elimination tournament plan, the winner today, St. Paul's, will play yesterday's winner, St. Martin's, in the quarterfinal round. And that will be a great game. We'll see you again next week. Goodbye, everybody. The questions on Varsity Quiz Bowl are prepared and authenticated by the WYS editorial research staff and known only in advance to the quiz master, producer, judge, and researcher. All 64 schools participating in our year-long tournament are matched by blind draw. Selections of team members and methods of preparation are the sole responsibility of the schools and their coaches. The preceding program was made possible in part by a grant from Pan American Life Insurance Company.